Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm here today with three of my favorite awesome parents who are also amazing business leaders. And we're going to talk a little bit about parenting through the current pandemic that we are facing. Uh, we're recording this in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic in America and Canada and the world. Um, and so I've got John Vroman with me today, who's got two kids. They are 10 years old and five years old. John is the founder of Front Row Dads, which is an amazing group of, um, of uh, entrepreneurial men all across North America who work together for the purpose of being better fathers. Uh, John leads that group. We also have Angie McDougal here today, who also has two kids. They are 14 and 11. Uh, Angie is the national sales manager of Vector Cutco in Canada. Uh, and uh, she is also uh, working with John to pioneer the Front Row Moms group. Um, so both of them are great leaders of parents as well. Uh, we also have Amber Vilhauer here today, who has a young son, three years old. Um, and Amber runs a digital marketing company with a team of 14 people. Uh, also, her husband, Jason, is a firefighter. He's a first responder. Um, Angie's husband, by the way, is also a volunteer firefighter on call uh, there in Canada. Um, and both John and Amber are Cutco Vector alums. Angie and I are, of course, current leaders in the Cutco Vector sphere. So we're going to talk a little bit about what's going on right now and how parents can be uh, making the most out of this situation. So thanks, guys, for being on the podcast. Dan, can I just yeah. take a minute and tell you how articulate that was? I know. I was thinking like, the, the same way, thing. His <laughs> pacing, his confidence, his like, I had, it's like I, I went right back to those moments years ago when I'd listened to Dan speak. And I'm like, I'd hang on his every word. Totally. It's, cra yep. it's crazy. I don't know. Can we teach that? Is that just John, a factor? John, <laughs> I, I spent at least 60 seconds preparing for that part right there. So <laughs> I'll have you know. That's so good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's have you guys tell us a little bit about what life looks for for you and your family right now right now. Angie, why don't you, uh, why don't you start? All right. Uh, great. Well, I'm excited to be here with all of you. Um, my husband and I both already worked from home mainly. I just uh, had quite a bit of travel involved in, in my business. Uh, so when everything got started going virtual and shelter in place, um, my work got busier than ever. So I definitely wasn't in the phase of what do I do now? Um, you know, I wasn't looking for things to fill my time so to move our entire business virtually uh, things got busier than ever so uh, uniquely our kids were actually on their already planned spring break when this happened mm. and so they weren't they weren't in a position where it's like oh no school they were like no school they thought it was poor timing they're like well we're not even missing school we just can't play with our friends and we can't do things we want to do so they were a little bit uh, that was the initial disappointment so um, now, the last few weeks is where it's got a bit more complicated uh, with managing routines and school. Uh, so it's been uh, more challenging in the last few weeks as we're learning to navigate this new normal. So, Yeah, cool. All right. Thanks for that. And a Angie, just for frame of reference for everybody lives in Canada, in British Columbia, uh, not mm -hmm. near Vancouver, though, kind of up uh, into yeah. the countryside. Yeah, I'm about a four and a half hour drive east of Vancouver and a three hour drive north of the Washington border. Got yeah. it. Cool. Mm -hmm. Amber, or uh, yeah, Amber, what's, uh, what's, what's uh, life looking like for you? Well, in some ways, it's not that different because I did run a virtual business since 2007. So I build websites and do marketing. Um, so my client calls have been over Zoom for a long time. I'm used to doing video and live streaming. Um, so business wise, not much has changed except I'm working a little bit more or more intensely. Um, just trying to manage client emotions. You know, people are a little bit more critical right now and quick to get upset about things that, um, so there's just a little bit more intention and energy that's going into it. But other than that, it's pretty much business as usual. Um, but obviously the biggest change was at home where my three-year-old son, Clay, um, he was going to uh, a school. It's kind of like a fancy daycare. They have, you know, uh, blocks where they're learning different uh, curriculums. They're going outside. But man, that was really time for me to be focused and on work. So now that he's home all the time, 
I think the challenge, though I don't have anything to compare it to in terms of older kids, but my challenge is that Clay doesn't really understand what's going on in the world right now. So he's just wondering why he's not going to school and where his friends are, what's going on. I mean, he's happy to be home, but also he doesn't have a whole lot of independence because at three years old, it's like, mommy, 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 or, you know, it's like, it's right. just really hands-on. Um, now, luckily, Jason is home uh, four days a week, so then it becomes easier. But on the days that he's gone, I'm basically not working unless Clay decides to take a nap that day um, or I'm working after hours. And, you know, Jason being a firefighter, that hasn't really changed anything. He's still gone three days and nights every week. The increased risk, though, is that if he does get exposed to COVID on a patient, he could be quarantined for up to two weeks. So that would be a challenge for sure. Um, but we're just staying positive. We're, we're in a routine and you know we're really good in crisis. So it doesn't feel that different. I think it just, the energy is a little bit different more than anything. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, you mentioned about, you know, people are getting upset about things they, they wouldn't normally, normally wouldn't have. And, yeah. and I just think there's just so much anxiety there around is. the situation that everybody is feeling and uh, it, it's, it's making, you know, some people, uh, difficult to, to, well, uh, cope with that. Totally normal. So we just have to all remember to feel compassion, lead with love, be understanding. I think open and honest communication is crucial. So definitely express yourself, but then there's a way to do it where it's not harmful and it's, you know, polite and kind and respectful. So, and I'm not trying to say it's ugly. I'm not trying to, you know, paint a grim picture or anything. It's just, I've just noticed that in general, people are more sensitive. Yeah. Cool. And you guys live in Denver, Colorado area. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. And then we have John Vroman here. John uh, and his family live in Austin, Texas. Uh, tell us uh, what life looks like for you guys right now. We're feeling all the feels, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's, you know, there's, I think like most, there are all these incredible moments and experiences and things that were like, that would have never happened if we weren't in this situation that I'm beyond grateful for. And I'm kind of grateful for the rub. I'm grateful for the, the, the close proximity and the tension that is caused by that because friction, you know, can, can create some heat and heat is, you know, can be healthy. So yeah. I, I like some of that crisis. I like some of that, uh, the challenges that emerge, like we put ourselves intentionally. I mean, Angie, you, you bike and run and swim insane distances because you want to test, you know, your capabilities. And this is mm -hmm. one of those chances. So, uh, yeah, I mean, when I look around the world, it, you know, breaks my heart to see some of the things that are happening. It, it I feel the pain that people are experiencing uh, to the level of which I could from my home. You know, I, I, I try to be compassionate. I try to feel that. I try not to totally disconnect from all that. You know, I, I want to actually recognize and appreciate and understand what's happening in the world. So, you know, things get a little tense around here at times. You know, my, my wife does not, she's not aiming to be a homeschooling mom. That's not her, that's on, not on her bucket list. <laughs> and so <laughs> while we respect homeschooling moms, she's being, she's in a position now where we're just asking, what does that look like for us? And it's a lot of time without as many breaks and we miss going to the gym and the sauna and people mm. and uh, our normal routine. And that causes a little bit of anxiety. And so we're, we're feeling all the feels. Yeah. Same, same here for sure. We, we, um, we have two kids. So my kids are six years old and three years old. So like Amber, I've got the three-year-old boy uh, who is demanding of attention, but luckily mm -hmm. I've got the six-year-old girl who can give him a lot of that attention. You know? <laughs> so, so that's the secret. <laughs> that, it does really help to have two, by the way, you guys might want to think about that for the next pandemic, Amber. Yeah. Um, but uh, it does help to have two. Um, but you know, what, what I'm finding is pretty interesting is that, you know, where, where we used to as a family spend maybe three or four hours together per day, right? Now it's suddenly, you know, 15 hours a day that uh, we're all basically together. And so the, the amount of experiences, the amount of interactions uh, is multiplied by, you know, three or four X or whatever. So um, what I feel is beneficial about that is that um, we have an opportunity to really define what we want our lives to be like because we're having all of these experiences and we can see what's going well and what's not going well. 
in, in my house, I've found there actually has been, I would say maybe less tension during this time. Um, and a big part of it is because there's no real time frame that our kids have to be on. There's no one, there's no reason to like rush the kids out the door in the morning mm. or, you know, or even rushing them to bed at night if they go to bed at 8.30 or 8.45 or 8.15 or even nine, whatever. It's all the same pretty much at this point. And so there, there is a, a little bit more of a relaxed pace because of that. Um, and I think that's something I want to make sure we, we talk about when we get through this is like, hey, there were some things that were happening during this time that I feel like should continue, you know, um, as far as our, the interactions we're having as a family, the interactions we're having, you know, in a relationship. I think what's most important is coming to the surface during this time um, for us oh, and that yeah. uh, that provides a big opportunity. And I also think there's a perspective that is offered here that has enabled us as a family to be a little bit more um, relaxed, I think, about our own personal interactions because we're seeing all this really negative stuff going on outside the home that is very real and very true. And, you know, we're, we're largely not experiencing the same type of negativity, um, you know, through our, because of our jobs being lost or anything like that, that other people are, our finances being hit, whatever. We're not, we're largely not experiencing that same negativity. And so there really have been a lot of positives that have come out of this that I view as opportunities for us to build on in the future. Um, I'm wondering, you know, on that note, how you guys are viewing this situation as an opportunity uh, because I think it is healthy to look for, you know, what is the gift in every challenge, in every situation. And I'd love to hear from you guys on that one. Maybe Angie, you can kick off on that one. Sure. Yeah. And just on a follow up, as to John said, you know, it's uh, for me, it's a it could be a little easy to stay disconnected to, to what's going on because I'm not affected in the same way I've lost my job. And, you know, and so if I don't go online for a little bit, you know, I can get in this bubble where I'm like, it's okay. You know, but I do want to stay connected and we have a street that's got quite a few doctors on it. So um, we, we, are, we are connected in that way where we know how it's impacting, you know, everybody. And so one of the questions that I've really started to ask myself is, um, you know, how do I want to look back on this? So, you know, I can get caught up in, oh, it's just, you know, I got a lot of work to do and I got, you know, I, I got to dig through this. And, but I do say to myself, when this passes, you know, what do I not want to lose? What's the gift here? And how do I want to reflect of how I showed up? And so some of the opportunities for us, you know, our daughter pre shelter in place was uh, doing rhythmic gymnastics 27 hours a week. And so there wasn't a lot of space for family hobby activities together, um, at least consistently that wasn't happening. So one of the opportunities we found is that we've really started to create more of these activities that we weren't doing, you know, so we started painting together. And when my girlfriends find out I'm painting, they're like, get out. I'm like, I know I'm painting. Like, so Ava's like in Declan, like, let's paint. So we're painting, you know, we're taking these online courses. Um, we're having, you know, the first couple of weeks this didn't happen. And then we shifted this is uh, we just made sure that we're having lunch together. So I stop, we go upstairs and we sit down at the table and we have lunch. Like we, we have dinners when we can, but like we have lunch together. And so that's helped out a lot. Uh, Ava has uh, really loved to bake before this, but now she's really taken it upon herself to cook. She's cooked dinner almost every night for the last, oh. you know, almost two weeks. And it has been, uh, it has been a gift and it has been amazing. Um, so it's been a huge opportunity that way. We started playing afternoon and evening shinny, which is hockey. Uh, if you're not familiar with that out front of our house, um, I don't play hockey, but I'm playing road hockey with our family. Um, that is a gift. Uh, conversations around emotions have come up more, um, really talking about how they feel. I'm really looking for, you know, how, how are you feeling? You know, what are you thinking about all this? And talking about emotions and it's okay to be sad and frustrated because of what's been taken away and not to belittle that. You know, I found it really easy. We got really upset about, you know, Ava had these big gym competitions coming up and it was going to be her last year competitively. And I was excited about it. She was excited. And, and I, I mean, I was crying when they got taken away. I was like, oh, and then all of a sudden it went to, well, it's not, we're not sick. It's, it's not that bad. We're not in so-and-so situation. So we just had this conversation about everybody has their own level and it's, it's tough for them and not to belittle or make it be less than just because, 
you know, your situation might be different than someone else's. And so we've been talking about that and then what we can control, what we can't, perspective, how to find the good, you know, that's been more conversation, how to be grateful. You know, in the beginning, my son was like, mom, why, why do you have to work so much? Like he's on spring break. He doesn't have this like routine. And I said, well, we're grateful that I get to, mm-hmm. I get to work. Some people don't get the chance. Some people don't get the opportunity. They don't have the choice, but I get the choice and I get to, and I'm, we're, we're really grateful that I get to do that. Um, so that's happened. And then the last couple of things has been, we've connected with our extended family uh, via Zoom more than we ever have. Um, we're tonight, it's a kid's talent show happening with my mom and my dad and, you know, they're all going to do my brother's kids, my sister. So we're all getting together via zoom. Um, so that's really been beneficial. And, um, and they've also increased how they're, they're contributing to take care of the house. So our kids, we do have a, a system where there's things they need to do to be a member of this house and there's things they get paid to do. Um, they're making more money right now. So that's pretty cool. They're, uh, their their uh, their savings accounts are moving in the right direction. That's for sure. So our our yeah. kids have been getting paid to uh, mop some floors and stuff like that too. So it's always cool to see the yeah. three year old pushing the mop around and <laughs> yeah. thinking he's getting a lot done. But anyway, <laughs> so it's cool. And and Angie, not only do you have the opportunity to work, but in your case, like you are helping a lot of other people to be able to continue their work. And yeah. I think that's really a critical piece of what what you're doing. Um, that uh, is a, is an awesome thing to be able to share with your kids and, and just to be able to know is that you know not only are you working but you're helping to make sure a lot of other people are able to get through this. So so that's yeah. really a, a pivotal thing. So awesome, awesome. Uh, you guys got anything you want to chime in on the opportunity that we are that we're seeing right now? I'll just add briefly that I think one of the bigger opportunities that I've been grateful for is just m- more open, honest conversation. It's one thing when you're talking to your spouse or your family about when everything's good, you know, but it's very different when things are challenging or where you're trying to troubleshoot together, you're trying to come up with different schedules and routines and, you know, trying to figure out how to make something work together is just so meaningful. Um, So just in the way that my husband and I have connected and grown stronger and deeper through this has been maybe one of my favorite things to come out of it so far. Cool. Awesome. John, you got anything to add? I mean, I always have something I could add, but uh, <laughs> let's, see where, let's see where else you want to take it. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Well, you know, one of the, uh, the opportunities I see is the idea of teachable moments with our kids mm-hmm. because our time with our kids is increased by, a, you know, a factor of, you know, two, three, four, whatever. Um, there's just so many more opportunities for these teachable moments where you can sit down with your kids and explain something that happened or explain something that they just saw or heard and, and then discuss it and teach it. Um, this might be something, you know, as a follow-up to a, a school lesson they're having, it might be something they saw on, on, you know, on TV or in a movie that we're explaining or in the news or, or just, you know, things that are happening on a day-to-day basis. Yesterday, my three-year-old crashed on his bike uh really the first time that he's like completely bit it on the bike it was probably my fault too he kind of bumped i was riding the bike near him and he kind of bumped into me and um okay so really i cut (laughs) i cut him off is what it really happened um by mistake and he went flailing on you know on in the street um and it just gave us a chance to sit down and say hey you know this is why we wear helmets right you landed on your head and your shoulder and you're totally fine. And if you didn't have a helmet, right, that it probably would have been a lot different. And that's an experience probably we've all had. I'm sure, John, you've had with your boys. Um, And it's not anything, you know, hugely significant in and of itself. But the fact is that there's a lot of little things like that that are happening right now, where I'm seeing an opportunity to sit down with one of my kids and say, hey, you know what I noticed right here? This is what happened. This is how we view that and just kind of teaching them right? How to view the different things that are going on. So I see a lot of those opportunities, a lot more so now that we're spending a lot more time, you know, with and around our kids on a daily basis. Um, How about uh, if we pivot to talking about how we're staying fit or how we're keeping our kids fit during this time? Because we're all confined um, a whole lot more. And I think that uh, it's important to be, you know, looking at health and fitness as an important objective. And 
John, why don't you start out sharing uh, what you're doing with your family? <clears throat> yeah. I'll first confess that this didn't go well in the beginning. I mean, we was like, stay at home. Yeah, let's Netflix and chill. Who's buying me ice cream, right? It was, <laughs> it was not a good initial response to it uh, on our part. But we, we definitely uh, knew that wasn't going to be a good long-term strategy. We, you know, we started out on this quest of 21 trails in 21 days. And it was just about exploring our, you know, three to five mile radius around our home. And we're, we're fortunate here in Austin to have some really good trail systems. But I will tell you, so it started with the All Trails app, which is like the Yelp for trails, right? So it just tells you where it is on the map, gives you pictures, tells you the terrain, people review it. It's awesome. And I love this app. Well, I mean, I've used it when I was traveling as a keynote speaker. I would go to a different city and I'd be looking for a running trail and I would use the All Trails app. I just never used it at home. <laughs> so we busted it out. We're like, let's go check out that one. I can't tell you, Dan, how many times my entire family, my, my boys, my wife, myself, all said, I can't believe this is two miles from our house. I can't believe we have lived here for three years and we didn't know this. And the other part of it is we thought we knew the trails, but you know how you get into your habits, you get into your routines. I mean, these are the challenges of habits, by the way. The habits that we do repeatedly that keep us in a groove are the ones that also keep us out of adventure at times. And mm. so we were, you know, we have this trail that's right near our house and we would go and I thought we were really great, right? Like Austin's awesome. We have this trail. We go run it, bike, walk, bike it, walk it all the time. And all of a sudden we're like, wait a minute, what's this little detour? It's like, oh my God, that little detour leads to a waterfall or some crazy, like, I mean, literally, I have pictures of all this. Like you can go see on my Instagram, all these hikes, all these epic spots. These are all within five miles of my house. And literally the value of my neighborhood, the value of this town has gone through the roof. Our, our experience of what we have right here in front of us, because we were, it's a positive constraint right? You're forced to look at it. You're forced to get a little deeper, go a little, you know, take a different route. And sure enough, like, it's amazing. I couldn't believe it. And we still can't believe it. Even this morning, literally an hour ago, I was on a run. I did the same thing. Where's this little trail? I'm like, oh my God, it opens up. Somebody had like made the trail. It was beautiful. It was, it was exercise equipment along the way. It was absolutely stunning. And it's, I literally walked to it from my house. I've lived here three years. I didn't even know it was there. And that's what's happening all the time. And so we're trying to put our feet in the grass. Now, again, fortunately we're in Austin. So not everybody has this opportunity available to them. Perhaps at the moment, if you're in a city, I want to recognize that you have to do what you can with what you have. But even like, you know, when you talk about, I mean, I'm talking physical health, but if we talk about even like, uh, you know, the, the health, mental, physical, spiritual, talking about food health. Uh, luckily, our timing was great on this. We ordered this thing called Click and Grow. I shared this with Amber the other day, but it's like, it's an indoor little garden, you know, that you just plant these little pods and you grow stuff. And now we're watching it grow every day. And we're, the kids are, are literally breaking off pieces of lettuce and eating it. There's so many things that are happening that are positive in the health realm right now. I mean, I could, I'm just scratching the surface, but that's kind of what we're experiencing because, um, I mean, luckily I have an amazing wife who's really focused on this. I have two kids that are open to being on their bikes and, you know, and, and running and walking and hiking and we like to be outside. So even if that means that you have to do it in your backyard or whatever, right, we have to figure out ways to touch, be in nature and, and, and touch the ground with our feet if we can at times. That's I awesome. I love that. <laughs> yeah, that was great. That was great. <laughs> Um, you, you fired me up to get on some of the trails around here because oh, it's been raining and the trails are a little muddy, but I'm, I'm fired up to get, uh, now that that's, uh, hopefully over. Dude, get they're there. still we delivering hiking shoes, waterproof hiking shoes. We, <laughs> <laughs> we have been, um, we've been doing a lot of long walks just in our neighborhood and we're, we're lucky enough to live in a neighborhood where when we walk around, it's, you know, there's not a whole lot of people walking around. Um, and so we can check out different little streets and, areas and different places and and uh and we've been taking progressively longer and longer walks with the kids so that uh you know the the three-year-old can do like three miles now on a on a walk and so you know we're we're going all sorts of different directions and places to see see cool things and and but we have the benefit like you do of having these trails all near us as long as we get in the car for a, a few minutes to get to them um, we can get to these really cool trails and that 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 sounds like an awesome idea yep. yeah 
and and because we don't have a lot of places to go or things to do, like we were saying, the schedules that we're we're here, we're at home, right? We don't now we're our our hikes are much longer. I was surprised, yeah. like you just said, you know, Ocean's five. He did a how long was the hike? Five and a half miles. He did a five and a half mile hike, and he did it. Uh, I only carried him for like three minutes the entire time. Now he was really tired at the end, but wow. I don't think I would have pushed him. And by the way, I didn't push him. We were just mm -hmm. on an adventure. There was no pushing him. It was literally like we were having fun. We also found the geocache. We've never used that app where you go mm -hmm. find little hidden treasures with your phone. Kids went nutso with that. Like that was Aww. really fun. So that's also something you could do if you're, if you're, if you have remote areas where you can be outside. Um, that's a cool one. Yeah. Awesome. Ladies, you got anything to chime in on health and fitness? Um, I'll just add that, uh, yeah, with the, the point about the trails is there is a spot here that we will typically take our dog on, but we don't usually take the kids on the extended version. And so the last few weekends, we've been taking the extended scenic route, which uh, I, I wouldn't, I would say in the beginning, it was kind of like, are we done? I'm like, no, we're not done. We've got nowhere to go, nowhere to be. We're going to keep going. And we have discovered some new trails that I never knew were there. Um, we had no idea and, and we're taking these really long outdoor walks and hikes, which has been really great. They've now officially closed all our public parks. Um, so we think we're going to get to know our neighborhood really, really well this weekend, which will be good. Um, we've, uh, we have a trampoline in the backyard. And so that's been part of our recesses. So we have started to like, you know, it's funny how people are like, Oh, I just cool. I just hang out. I'm like, yeah, it's not good for you at all. Actually just to sit and hang out. Um, and now they're discovering that. So we've planned in their schedule where it's like, you got to get up and you go take that recess at school. You do recess for a reason. You move for a reason. So, so they go out to the trampoline and they're doing stuff on the trampoline, which helps. Um, that makes a difference. We've had, um, in terms of food, we're doing our best to make sure everything's made. Uh, I've heard a few people say a few times, you know, there's the freshman 15. It's going to be the COVID 15. I've heard that <laughs> is, uh, I said, yeah, it's important that we're trying to have smoothies and, and make homemade, you know, uh, cookies and snacks and lots of fresh fruit um, has been uh, important. And for us, actually, one of the things is just routine. Um, I know it's good to be out of routine sometimes, but for my personal experience, our kids thrive on some bedtime earlier, good quality sleep and some routine and some purpose. And so we're, we're bringing that back. And I think that's helped their their mindset too so all right awesome we're getting a lot of street time with our kids at the end of every day um we we live at the we live on a long cul-de-sac at the very end it's almost a quarter mile long cul-de-sac and so there's like tw i think maybe 20 22 houses you know all the way down and we're at the very end and so the only people that come down here are the like four neighbors right down here at the very end and um and so we're getting um, at the end, at, you know, at the end of every day, you can kind of hear the kids outside from, you know, some of the neighbor kids are out there and, you know, my kids will come running out and, you know, Hey, can we go down now? And we'll, we'll go down to the street and they all bring their bikes and their scooters and stuff like that. And, you know, they're scooting up and down the street and it's totally safe. And, um, you know, and they're able to, uh, to hang out and get that street time and I'm running up and down the street with them the whole time. And so it's helping me to make sure I get, get some of my time outside, um, and, uh, it's just been fun, uh, being able to connect with some neighbors in this way too, a whole lot more. So that's been one of the things that's been cool about, uh, you know, getting outside every day. How about, uh, with regard to education, I feel like this is one of the big challenges because obviously all our kids are home from school. Um, I know in our area here, school has been essentially canceled for the remainder of the school year. So my kids won't go back to school until August at this point. Um, and that, that's a huge you know, challenge, right? It's having them home every day and trying to, trying to manage that. Um, how are you guys ensuring that your children's education continues moving forward, you know, with some reasonable pace here? Um, Amber, you wanna take that one first? Yeah, and you guys will also have to chime in because you have older kids, right? So with a three-year-old, <laughs> it is challenging because, you know, we'll sit down and try to teach him something and he may or may not understand what you're trying to talk to him about, right? So we've just had to get really creative. Um, his school has given us some online support and some activities 
you know, but it's not the same. So we've just gotten really creative and um, I'll never forget one thing that I thought was so cool that Jason did. I came downstairs from doing an interview or something I was doing and they were coloring at the dining room table. And Jason said, yeah, we just watched a, um, a magic school bus episode and it was all about the ocean life. And after the episode was over, we came in here and now we're drawing these huge, they were each drawing their own ocean life, you know, uh, on a piece of construction paper and talking about the fishes versus the sharks versus the water life and the currents. And, and I'm looking at Jason like, I am not that good of a parent. Like, <laughs> You know, we might all have those moments. And then we, uh, we also came up with this idea that our family is really enjoying. We take the letters of the alphabet and it's one letter a day. We'll pull, let Clay pull out a piece of construction paper, whatever color he wants, and we'll draw like a uppercase and a lowercase letter on it. I'll see if I can get my phone to focus in on it. But what we'll do, the phone is like picking up on the reflection. But what we'll do is we'll like look at family photos that start with the letter B. This is an example of B. So there's like baby, birthday, Buzz Lightyear, balloon, backpack. And so we'll cut out all these pictures together. And then we have this like huge stack of stickers and we'll find all the stickers that start with a letter B. And then we'll, you know, we'll sit there and like playfully look around the house and like, what else starts with a letter B? And I'll just start writing the words down. And then we carry that theme throughout the rest of the day. So we'll look at book and like, hey, Clay, it starts with a letter B. And he gets so just delighted by it. Um, so the, the positive thing about that particular exercise is that I've noticed it's a great release for me. Um, you know, it's not stressful at all. I can just like kind of relax into it. And so I'm taking care of myself while I'm doing a teaching moment um, and finding those opportunities to stay mentally strong, making sure that I'm getting enough rest, uh, making sure that I have these outlets has been really important because otherwise I might let that anxiety get to a point where I'm not as fun of a mom or I don't see the natural teaching moments as much because I'm distracted thinking about something else. Um, so I do think from an education perspective, the more the parent takes care of themselves, which I've noticed is Probably one of my biggest challenges out of this experience is finding time for self-care. I used to have more of it. Um, so now I just have to make sure that the little times that I do have count more than ever before. And then what I find, going back to your point, Dan, I can look around and find almost anything as a teaching moment. Clean up our mess before we leave a room. That's a teaching moment. Why do we do that? Why does it feel good? We want to respect our space. We want to take care of our toys, you know, and, and Clay, you just see him really getting into it. And he's developed so much in the past few weeks. And that's really rewarding as a parent. It makes me want to find like, what other things can we be doing right now? So there's just some things that come to mind for a three-year-old, but I don't even know at all what it would be like for, you know, somebody that's in elementary or even high school. No clue. Yeah. Well, John, Angie, you guys want to speak to that? John, you want to go? Ladies first. Okay. Yeah. So just, these are just quick things that uh, on the note of like playing, but educating. So we've been picking games to play more frequently that can add an educational, educational component. So yep. we've been playing cash flow kids and it has oh, been nice. phenomenal. Like I love it. It is just fantastic. Our kids are the right age. They're, asking it just it's great so about money and wealth building and it's just been super fun we've been playing scrabble and my kids uh you know i'm a little competitive so i'm i'm not you know I'm, I'm not going with the little words but it was great last night there was lots of discussion about you know building words and you know all that kind of thing and then just on a you know trying to keep the gratitude with the education there's a great coloring book for uh for anybody i mean i love to color but the miracle morning Hal Elrod has a coloring book and it's been a great piece to just even get kids to, to pick a page a day and color it because it's got really um, beautiful sayings in them that um, can make it fun, but still a topic about teaching gratitude. I've got that Miracle Morning coloring book and I, I, I hadn't thought about busting that out right now. Thank you for the reminder. Yeah, that's yeah, good. John. Yeah, guys, um, this has been really fun to explore for our family. And, you know, <clears throat> there's a couple of things I'll say to this. So one is that I, I subscribe to 
kind of a world schooling mentality where I don't really get wrapped up in whether or not they're on track for what the school system tells me they should be doing to be okay as a human. I, I just don't subscribe to that. And, and there's a couple of reasons why, you know, Tiger was in a private school for a while and then he moved to a public school and people would say, oh, he's going to so, be so far behind. It's going to be really hard for him to transition. And then we ended up doing the test and yeah, he was really behind in his math from where he had to be. And, and the crazy part is it took us seven days to get him caught up to where he apparently needed to be. Like seven days, right? Um, and and I, just, I just don't panic that much about somebody like getting off track or losing. I, for me personally, at my kids' ages, and I can't speak to any other kid, any other family, any other school system, any other way that anybody wants to raise their kids, this is not about making somebody else wrong. This is about what we believe, right, as the Romans. And what we believe as the Romans is that this is a, what are they learning about life right now? You know, what are they learning about human emotions? The things that in a true crisis in life later on as an adult, what are they going to maybe not even consciously realize, but subconsciously have programmed in that how do we respond when the world needs help? How do we respond in times when we're challenged by something? What am I reading from my mom and dad? What I really want to know is not whether or not my kids kept up with math or science, but what values did they walk away with from this experience? Like, will they be able to feel those values? Will they be able to um, live out those values of how did we respond, right? That's what I'm most concerned with. And I think the real question is when you're designing a schedule for your life as an entrepreneur and as an adult, you want to start with, well, what type of life do you want to build? And then work backwards to build a schedule that supports the life that you want. And we should do the same for our kids where I'm not trying to make my school system happy. Uh, I'm trying to raise a child into a, to be a human in a world that, that, uh, that I want them to feel empowered by. So as an example, how that really shows up is we've spent more time in our homeschooling adventure with like vision boards or bonding as a family, right? The hikes have been more, our, our PE is extended to hours and hours. I, I don't, I don't think it's actually healthy to have PE be 30 minutes. I think that's ridiculous. I don't think children are born that way. Certainly yeah. it doesn't work for adults to do that. And uh, I think that's terrible. So when I'm in control, right, I'm going to extend PE to be three hours every day, right? I'm gonna, I want my kids to play. I want them to, to you know, have a good time. And so I'm not trying to keep to the school schedule. Uh, we want to do more art. And we have. We've been painting and we've been drawing. And Tatiana's done an amazing job with that, by the way. She's really spearheaded that. But here's, Dan, you're going to love this. Actually, all three of you are going to love this. I don't know if I told you this yet, but the kids, they made all this art. They had all this stuff. Then I proposed, what could they do with it? Right. Then that led to the conversation of, well, you, 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 you know, um, who could you sell this to? Uh, does, is there a need for this? Like, how could you, like, then it led to the business. Now they've outlined a store. They've built a store in our living room. They've got lights. They've got a welcome sign. And they have made a store where they've got essential oils. They've got paintings. They've got all this stuff that they've been building. So now their days are filled with purpose right? And at night after dinner, every night after dinner, we come shopping with a couple bucks in our hands. Ty, uh, Ocean calls them flappy dollars. He says, no coins. I only want flappy dollars. <laughs> oh <laughs> so, my so we have this, like, and we've had so much fun. In fact, we had, like, we were talking about how to get change and Tiger was daring his mom to like ask the clerk at the store for flappy dollars in change for a 20. <laughs> like, she, like we've just had a blast as a family talking about what is a business all about. Now here's one more thing you guys are going to love is that it, it, it keeps evolving. I keep saying, how do I make this more fun? How do I make this more enjoyable? How do I make this more instructional? Where's the lesson in this? And here's what it led to. Every day I'm now sitting down with the boys and teaching them one lesson about building their business. And I'm adding it to a chart every day. So lesson number one, build rapport with your customers. Cause you know, the first thing they're doing is you walk in and they're like, give me $5, you know, like, and, and uh, you know, and then, and then you're like, Hey, how about I pay you 50 cents? And they're like, boo, you suck as a customer. <laughs> you know, and, and I'm like, so let's lesson number one, be about how we treat our customers. Right. Uh, 
I mean, I could tell you some funny stories. You want the real behind the scenes? The real behind the scenes is that last night, both my kids are naked in the store. And we come into the store and both of my kids are naked and they're like, yeah, I'm the naked man. I'm the naked <laughs> store owner. And we're oh like, you know, this may not work for you. <laughs> 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 this might scare off your cut. So we left Tiger's store and went to Ocean store. And like, we've been, we've been, oh so I, what gosh. I said to Tatiana, she goes, this is, my, Tatiana at one point said, this is so frustrating because Ocean's demanding. I'm like, this is great. We want these problems because if our kids can't experience the problems at home, then they're going to leave the house and have to face them for the first time in the real world. I want them to get rejected. I want them to understand that we're not going to pay them $8 for a scribble that they spent 16 seconds making, right? Like I want to create a true experience. I want there to be tension. I want there to be like, there've been hurt feelings by the way, when one kid, like we'll spend one, we'll spend more money in one store than we will in the other. Ju you know, like, and, and it's been awesome, man. So then, wow. then here's the thing, ready? Last piece, last piece. I'll cut myself off, I promise. Is that we get the, we get the relatives involved. We get Aunt Kirsten on FaceTime mm. and she's looking at it. But then I'm like, mm. hey, how could, you, how could you design something that grandma and grandpa would like? So let's interview grandma and grandpa, learn about what they like, understand what their needs are, what their interests are, what their favorite colors are. So they're learning about grandma and grandpa, then they're making stuff and then selling it to them. And it has been epic. And to me, that's ultimate world schooling that's taking a real that's i want those are skills i want them to have so i want to take everything i learned in cutco and just bring it to bring it home I, it was so funny i was literally sitting down and i was remembering the sales process i learned when i was 18 years old and i was like i was yeah it's it was it was awesome so that's it you are one of my favorite humans in the whole world oh my <laughs> gosh unbelievable that was great that was an awesome nugget and you know on that note somebody once said to me only you know what's right for your kids. Yeah. And, you know, your mentality, John, about I'm not exactly concerned about what pace the schools want us on for certain things. Like, I want to make sure that I'm giving my kids what I think they need in the moment. Um, I think that's a valuable insight, and particularly during this time where we're sort of the teachers. Um, I think that's a really valuable, valuable insight for sure. Uh, any other nuggets? you guys want to share uh, for people that are looking for some guidance on how to get through this? Um, I'll, I'll just share one more that I've noticed has come up and it's different depending on the age of kids, I think, and, and what it was like before this happened, but you know, uh, scheduling time. So Amber brought up self care, which I think is, I think it could very easily get away with us that we're not scheduling that. And so just like the oxygen mask example is that, we need to put that on ourselves and not feel guilty because we're going to be a better version for everyone else in our family. But at the same time is one-on-one -on -one time with your spouse or your partner is some people when their kids are really little, you know, they had a babysitter come in and that babysitter would come and they would go out. And now for a lot, I'm going to say almost everybody, that's really not an option. And so finding the, the way, maybe it's during the day, you know, and maybe kids, the kids, if they're little enough, they go to bed early enough so that there's designated time, uh, you know, however many times a week where just, you know, mom and dad can sit down and have space one-on-one -on -one and, and being, making something creative with it, right? Maybe it's dinner in the living room. Maybe it's a date that's in the other room, right? It's something, or it's just even watching a movie together, but it's designated that we're not on a screen. We're just spending time. We're connecting. Um, that's been a big challenge for us, I think. And, um, not that we had a babysitter cause our kids actually are old enough to stay home alone, which has been a whole new world. It's been amazing. So we do go ride together and we run together, but it's not the same as designating space that is for us. And I found there's been a little bit on my own experience, a bit of guilt about my kids are home. I need to make sure when I'm not working and with my kids, you know, there's this thing. And so it's just been something over the last little while that uh, my husband's definitely reminded me that, um, you know, we need to create that space, mm. so. Good point. I would add, you know, I kind of, I've mentioned it earlier, but what keeps saying right here at the top of mind is just open, honest communication. You know, like 
I need to just take clay and go outside and play in the sun for a while. And I would tell that to my team, like I'm, I'm out for a little bit, <laughs> or I would go home and tell my husband and clay, like, I just need a minute. I'm going to go into the back bedroom. I'm going to turn off the blinds and turn on the little sound machine that we have. Like it's like a white noise thing. And I'll just lay down and take a nap for 20 minutes in the middle of the day, because I need that to just then keep going the rest of the afternoon. Um, so I'm just being really open and honest with whatever I'm feeling, what I'm thinking. Um, and I know that that's the best thing that I can do for me so that nothing is getting bottled up, but also for my family. And it's also giving them permission to be open and honest as well. And, you know, for a lot of men, I think, at, some men in the world have this thing like I have to hold it up and be strong for everybody. And it's like, well, no, not really. You know, like I want, and Jason's not like that. He's very open too, but just knowing the landscape that's out in the world, like I would even want men to feel comfortable coming forward about like, what are you really feeling? What are you afraid of? What do you need? Even if it's a good thing. Um, so that's, that's really what I encourage everybody to remember. Yeah, our great mutual friend, Hal Elrod, has a quote I always remember where he says, authenticity trumps perfection. And I think that uh, for anybody that's tr trying to think like they can get through this in a way that's, quote, perfect, um, that is way too much pressure to be placing. Uh, I, like you, Amber, need to just completely unplug sometimes for 20 or 30 minutes in the middle of the day. I'll go hide in a room in the house and, mm -hmm. um, and just you know, sit there quietly to myself. Um, I need that time as an introvert to sort of recharge. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and I think it is important for us to make sure that we're taking care of ourselves. So great. Uh, any last words, John? Uh, thank you guys so much. Love my time with all of you, such beautiful souls and uh, making such a big impact in the world. That's just a, it's just a joy to be doing life together. So um, thank you guys. This has been a lot of fun. Yeah. Thanks, John. Thanks, Amber. Thanks, Angie, for your time today. Great. That was John Vroman, Angie McDougall, and Amber Vilhauer. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, it's great to hear each of them describe their own personal situations and the challenges that they are facing. And I think it just helps us all realize that we are all in this. Every single one of us is facing different challenges to navigate this time. And with those challenges come opportunities. And rather than focusing on the negative side of what's happening, I do think it's so important to be looking at what, you know, what are the potential gifts that are presenting themselves to us in this situation? What are the opportunities? And make sure that you think about that question from your own context, your own point of view, right? What do you view as the gifts or opportunities that exist for you and your families? One of the things I mentioned was the, the idea of the opportunity to define how you want to live your life, right? That what's most important is coming to the surface during this time. Um, and it really is an opportunity for all of us to do some serious thinking, maybe some journaling, have some powerful discussions as we come out of this, you know, about uh, what went well, what do we want to make sure we maintain um, when life goes back to the way it was, or at least some semblance of the way it was. Um, and uh, how do we want to live our lives? Um, health and fitness is a key thing during this time. Uh, if you're somebody that just doesn't feel comfortable leaving your home or leaving your uh, you know, general uh, vicinity, um, then you, know, you find ways of doing these kind of things in your home. But uh, for those people who are comfortable getting outside, uh, the John referenced the All Trails app, which I think is cool. Uh, getting some time for long walks outside, getting the kids outside to be able to play um, in the fresh air, whether it's in your yard or, you know, the, like we have the opportunity in our street. Um, I feel like that's critical right now. And, and self-care is a big part of health and fitness as well, making sure that you are keeping yourself right. Whatever that takes. Right? If you need individual time, making sure that you find a way of getting that uh, in whatever manner uh, is necessary, just to be sure that, uh, that, that you are right, because that, that is a key to making sure that everyone around you is right. Loved all of the educational ideas that came out, the hunt around the house for things that start with different letters for the little kids. 
uh, games uh, for the bigger kids. Angie referenced Cash Flow Kids, uh, the Miracle Morning Coloring Book. Um, we're having lots of Zoom classes. Luckily, with our kids, we're able to have the Zoom classes with their, their schools. Uh, lots of reading is happening right now. Uh, of course, educational games, crafts, the idea of teachable moments, right? Make sure you're, you're, you're recognizing those times. And, and for me, I'm dropping everything when I see a teachable moment and I'm sitting down with one or both of my kids and discussing what just happened and what they can learn from that. And, and a lot of great education is coming out of that that I do feel like is more valuable than some of the sort of mundane things that they would be learning sitting in school. So there is a great opportunity for increased learning when you view it in that context. I also last want to reiterate that only you know what is right for your kids and your family. And I think it's important to make decisions as you're progressing through this situation. Don't worry about always being perfect or right with your decisions. You can always undecide uh, and change course. Um, but make decisions and run with it. Do the best you can. Use the support of others around you. Hopefully, you all have supportive people in your lives that you can network with and talk to. Um, and, uh, you know, let's make the most of a challenging situation, and we're all going to come out of it on the other side for the better. Thanks very much for listening or watching here today.